All right, welcome to the Welcome to IH workshop. As a warning, everything you ask will be recorded and put to our YouTube channel um, where you can access the recording of this workshop after the fact. Um, as we already discussed, the topics that we'll be going over is part one, we'll be going over everything in your class's department degree, and part two will be everything beyond your class's projects and career. At any point, if you have a question, raise your hand. Yeah. Um, first, thanks for some housekeeping. Um, if you have not already, you're in an IGA event, you want to join IGA, it's up to you. But please join us in campus groups, costs you nothing, and it helps us towards our pizza budget, which means we can host more events like this. Um, also post this in the IGA Discord after the fact, but um, that's it. So that's happening. Moving on. Yeah, no, I got um, it's Jesus, not me again. Um, welcome to part one, department degree. How do you succeed in your IMG classes? Well, you have to know who's teaching them. Um, we're going to go over pretty much a bunch of the common professors, um, not all of which are IMGD. Um, there are some humanities and arts professors that teach a lot of IMG courses here. Um, this is sort of a, a lineup of the best of CS IMG. Um, all these people are technically CS IMG professors, but that's because IMG is a subsection of CS. Um, Jillian Smith is the director of ING. Uh, she teaches a lot of tech and CS classes and a lot of AI and games classes. Uh, if you have the chance to take her 4100 course as a tech student, I'd recommend it. It's a great course. Um, Charlie Roberts, or Charles, Charles Roberts officially, um, he is another one of the tech professors here. He teaches a lot of uh, graphics and simulation and live coding. He's, he's this big thing. You'll hear a lot about it. Um, another one of the people that you will interact with if you're on the tech side. Mark Claypool, Mark Claypool, um, he's the last big one. He teaches ING 3000, which is a major course for tech students. We'll go over what that means because it's called a focus pair. Um, he teaches a lot of networking and game engine courses, as well as running a lot of MQPs about networking, latency, and multiplayer. Um, if you're ever interested in some of the back end stuff to that, he's the person you want to talk to. Um, so I'm not that well versed in art. Jeff might be better, but um, oh, these are uh, some of oh, fuck, right? You didn't hear me swear. It was on the mic. So uh, Jeff would probably be better at uh, talking about some of the art professors. Yeah. Um, but we have Farley uh, Cherry. Uh, he does a lot of technical um, art, and he also has been the professor for social implications for the past few years. He actually runs Rings of Color, which is a really cool program uh, where you uh, 3D model uh, characters over the summer and you get paid for it. Um, it's really good uh, just to get stuff on your portfolio if you're a 3D artist. All right. Good job. Um, yeah, if you want to uh, come over to the microphone. But yes, uh, Professor Farley teaches just general 3D art stuff, especially 3D animation. And as Tata's mentioned, Rigs of Color is a cool program if you're ever interested. Make sure you're speaking into the mic. Okay, right, Mike. Uh, and in the middle is uh, Professor Sutter, who also teaches mostly 3D modeling and animation, but he also teaches uh, 2D animation one. Uh, so he specializes in character art and animation related things. And uh, uh, on the right is uh, Professor. How do you pronounce her name again? I'm not sure. Just roll the dice. <laughs> Professor B. Professor B, thank you. Uh, but yes, um, even though she is technically not an IMGD professor, but uh, most of the um, humanities and arts classes that she teaches uh, tend to fall under the required courses category for IMGD. For example, uh, I took uh, Intro to Digital R with her, uh, highly recommend. But basically, she focuses on just Intro to Photoshop and Illustrator, as well as just graphic design stuff. And she also teaches video stuff, namely Premiere, as well as uh, After Effects, so you can learn video and uh, advertising as well. So if graphic design is your passion, go to her classes. Yeah, that's what that would do. Cool. All right, so more faculty. I'll have you chime in if there's anything I'm missing here, but we're going to breeze through some of these. Adrian Gonzalez is another humanities and art professor who is well known for teaching a lot of the IMG courses. Um, she teaches a lot of the 2D art courses and as well as some stuff in film and concept art. Um, Edward Gutierrez, you'll notice that I have now asterisked Disney because I've been told to lead with this. 
Um, he has a lot of experience because he comes to us from Disney. Um, he's worked on probably all of your, a lot of your favorite childhood films, including uh, Emperor's New Groove, Emperor's New Groove, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Beauty and the Beast uh, Lion King, Aladdin, Little yeah. Mermaid, and Pocahontas. Beauty and the Beast, yeah, has a lot of them. Uh, he has his own page on Disney Wikipedia, so mm -hmm. feel free to look at the slide afterwards and look where that links. Uh, he teaches a lot of the 2D art courses and animation courses here, and um, we're lucky to have him. Yeah. Uh, Rosenstock is a, another humanities professor who teaches a lot of, I'm seeing I'm seeing some uh, silent applause back there, uh, teaches a lot of 3D art courses and other interactive media things. Um, do you have anything else to say about Rosenstock? Uh, not really. He's a very, very nice professor. He uses on reading a lot, and he also teaches, uh, at least for this school year and last school year, he was, he was responsible for teaching IMG 3500, which is one of the two required courses for IMGR majors where you'll be making essentially a 3D art demo for a video game. Maybe we'll get to that later on. All right. So now we get to a few of the non-artists. We have uh, Melissa Kagan, Karen Stewart, and Ben Schneider. Um, all of these uh, professors uh, do a lot of cool stuff with design. Um, Melissa Kagan and Karen Stewart are some of the newer professors. Uh, they both they both uh, came here this year, um, last oh last year last year this year whatever. Um, time is an illusion, uh, but um, as the presentation says, uh, Kagan does a lot with escape rooms primarily. Uh, Karen Stewart uh, taught um, digital design uh, two um, two or one last year. Uh, one one. Um, which uh, was not digital. Uh, we uh, made board games, uh, but she does a lot of cool stuff with visual novels. Uh, Professor Schneider is one of the better professors in IMGD. He does a lot of writing and design work, and he's super chill. The reason Ben's great is because of all the experience he brings. He helps out with a lot of the events later on in the year, including um, his connections to a lot of industry folks for our later on events that we'll talk about show fest. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next slide, we're going to talk about some more. Um, I don't want to say outskirts, but um, these are. This is not. There's no common theme of these. Uh, Walt, Profe Walt Yarbrough is an IMG professor who came to us from Becker. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the lore of Becker later on, but uh, he teaches a lot of the production courses and grad courses. Um, he's also related to Mass Digi, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, Rodney is a brand new professor this year. Um, he starts teaching classes this beat term. He'll be taking over much of the audio program, including the game audio courses. Uh, Allison Darling is the IMG operations manager. Um, do not be fooled. She is maybe one of the most important people on this list. Um, she handles a lot of the stuff in the back end that makes this program work. Uh, IMG would not run without. Um, speaking of people that are instrumental to running. <laughs> All right. So we have the shadow government that's uh, formerly called the community committee. A few professors, uh, such as Farley, uh, Gonzalez, and uh, Professor Smith, uh, run it. Uh, they're responsible for event, uh, some event coordination and colloquiums, uh, which are every Wednesday at noon. Um, the FEST IQP is something that uh, Nick, uh, Jeff, and I uh, were on last year. They handle uh, the like bigger uh, IMGD events such as uh, Alpha Fest, Show Fest, Joy Art, and the WPI PAX East booth. We'll get to all those later on. Um, if you want, if you're ever interested in uh, working on the IPP, uh, you should definitely uh, talk to Melissa Karen. Uh, uh, no, Karen. Melissa Kagan. I was thinking Karen. Uh, listen, I'm tired. Um, Professor Kagan, because um, uh, she's one of the advisors for that group. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> um, oh, I thought there was someone at the door. Oh. All right. Um, also, um, your steering reps uh, for the A term are uh, Jeff and I. I'll just be here for A term. Uh, like once Connor gets back, he'll be the BS uh, steering um, representative. Uh, but our office hours are uh, in Fuller Commons, that room right over there, uh, Fridays at 2. So uh, come down. We can talk about what's going on with the IMGD uh, program. You can tell me any complaints or questions, and I can bring them to the faculty. I can also tell you what the faculty says in uh, general faculty meetings. So stop by. Hang out.
Um, but now let's talk about your degrees. So IMG is um, several degrees in a trench coat. Um, we're broken up majorly into IMG technology and IMG BA. So bachelor of science, bachelor of arts. Um, IMG tech is fairly straightforward. There's only one major and you can't get any deeper than that. Um, IMG BA is the trench coat of six paths you can take, including uh, music and audio, writing, visual arts, technical arts, design, and then not having concentration. Um, we'll get into the weeds of what that means very soon. Uh, but for all these degrees, there are designated tracking sheets available to you. Um, if you have not already, and you are planning to be an IMG major, your one of your first steps should be downloading this tracking sheet and starting to plan essentially your next four years. All these tracking sheets are available on WPI's program tra tracking sheet website. Um, and once again, any links you see in this slide deck will be posted alongside the slides, which will be posted to the Discord after this. Um, as part of doing your tracking sheets, there's a couple things you keep in mind. One, um, there's different tracking sheets for different years. Usually, they're not too different, but you are allowed to use any sheet belonging to your, one year, year, or, um, your year or the ones that take place after you arrived here. So if you're a 2000, class of 2007, um, you cannot do a class of 2005 tracking sheet, but you could do a 2008 or 2000, uh, no, 2008. 2007 could do 2008, 2009. Um, yeah. I, I kind of just realized that I dropped a whole 20 years there. Um, anyway, um, when you're doing your tracking sheets, keep in mind a few things. You can double count courses for a lot of things. So not triple count, though. Not, never triple count. Uh, if you're an IMG Tech and CS student, there is so much you can double count, it's criminal. Um, <laughs> but if you're trying to cover your humanities basis and some of your requirements for IMG Tech and CS, that's triple counting, and that will get you put into jail. Um, never triple count, essentially. Otherwise, there is it's, the system just will not let you. Um, and you can pretty easily figure that out when you use your tracking sheets. You'll be copying, pasting some numbers, and you'll realize, oh, this one's here three times. Um, any questions about tracking sheet stuff? Ben. Is there a, a website or other uh, resource we can use to find out what courses we can double count, or like what sections? Um, it's gonna the tracking sheets. If you look in this picture right here. Each of the tracking sheets will have a section that describes essentially what criteria fits it. Um, so you may notice actually right here, quite a good one. English, if you have a cultural narrative English credit, we also use it as one of your humanities and arts requirements. That would count as double counting, so you could have it there. Man, uh, should I? Uh... I'm actually at the yeah, program tracking sheets website. Mm -hmm. or just... Like for that trace, I to like IGBA or Feel free. Um, it's also linked in the slide deck that will be posted afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No more questions? We'll move on. Well, let's talk about concentrations. So degrees that broke down are basically the Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts. The concentrations are a little more niche. They are essentially additional criteria topped on top of your Bachelor of Arts degree that will force you to take certain focus pairs and electives. Um, each of the concentrations has a focus pair, which is two specific classes. And each of the concentrations also requires you to take four electives fitting within that concentration. Um, each concentration in Bachelor's of Art has its own tab in the BA tracking sheet. So if you're confused or you don't remember this information, pretty much just find the tracking sheet you need and follow it. It won't be a big issue. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about focus pairs now. So focus pairs are actually something that everyone does, even bachelors of tech. They just don't know that it's called focus pairs. Focus pairs are essentially the two courses in IMGD that you are going to be taking as the core of your concentration or degree. Um, I've listed the visual and technical art focus pair here, which is the same, as well as the bachelor of science focus pair. But if you are audio, if you are design, if you are writing, you have a different focus pair. Um, these courses are... Great. These are some of my favorite courses taken here, and I think you could talk as an artist about that, Jeff. Yeah. Do you like those courses? Uh, yes. Uh, granted, there is a bit of bias for me because I'm a 2D artist. Well, 3500 and 4500, they primarily teach you about uh, 3D art and assets in game engines, namely Unity and Unreal. But it doesn't hurt to learn one more skill. I sort of learned how to make a half ass rig in 4500, so... And from a tech side, 3,000 and 4,000 are probably some of the most like knowledge you're going to get out of a single course. Uh, 3,000 tells you to program a whole game engine. Um, it's a very fun course. And 4,000 has you make a whole game in Unreal by collaborating with those students from 4,500. 
Um, definitely we're all in the same team. Definitely yeah. one of my favorite classes, EOW. Mm. Um, any questions about focus pairs? Oh, uh, each concentration has its own. Yes, each has its own. It's just a fluke that technical and visual art have the same focus pair. Um, but for every concentration, uh, we went through and we talked to some people from concentrations to figure out what is recommended. Um, speaking from tech, if you are taking tech, there is no reason for you not to take 4100. It's a great course, lets you go about game AI in uh, games, lets you play around with some Mario agents and some level procedural generation. Uh, and really you can fun. Count it. And you can double count it, yes. Uh, no, it's a lot credits. of fun. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about it? Okay, uh, sure. IMGD, yeah, yeah. and as for uh, our classes, most people would start with um, AR slash IMG uh, 2700, aka digital painting, usually taught by uh, Professor Gutierrez. Uh, this class is great because uh, he works under a very strict professional guideline where you have to uh, use naming conventions to save things and learn how to learn the um, file conventions for Photoshop, for example, like DPI, canvas sizes, yada, yada. And the techniques you learn in digital painting can also be implemented into other classes like 2D Animation 1, 2D Animation 2, or... Uh, even for 3500 and 4500, learning how to use um, Photoshop to make 2D sketches or concepts for things will help you a lot when you have to actually make 3D models in Maya or ZBrush. You notice a lot of the classes listed here also are AR slash IMGD. Um, some of them are actually secretly IMG slash CS. Those are things that can be double crowned across disciplines, which works really well. Um, from Alistair, um, we recommend the music course. Um, if you're an audio concentration, um, one of the audio students recommended MU3614, Topics of MIDI. Um, from what I've heard, this sounds like a great course for you to learn about the digital workings of audio and MIDI format. Um, you, can get the same you can get a lot of information from it if you do Game Audio 1, which is required for most IMG students. Um, but also, it's great to pursue that further with MIDI, uh, Topics of MIDI, that course if you're interested in audio. Um, writing students have recommended ING 1002, which is one of your intro courses. Um, it's recommended as if you are a writer, storytelling in IMG, it kind of seems like a no-brainer. Um, it's a very fun course, too. Um, I'm not sure how it's taught right now, but previously it was taught where the class essentially broke up into two teams and made arcs and competed against one another to solve it. Um, not sure if it's the exact same now, since the professor that previously taught the course passed away. Ben? I've taken that course, and... Um... From my experience last year, uh, yeah, each section made their own ARG. Mm -hmm. against so it sounds like the exact same format, which, I mean, it's, it was fun when I took it, so I imagine it was still fun. It was fantastic. There we go. Um, for design, uh, we've, we've had, I think Jay recommended this. Um, IMG 2500 Tabletop Strategy with Kagan. Um, come up here and talk about it. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to give second information if the source is right here. I can do that. <laughs> so, where are we from? I can do that. you make me. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. So IMGD 2500 is a all type of different board game class. Uh, there are four optionally, I think the fourth you can do a couple different things with, but you go through a bunch of different genres with uh, different uh, ways that they have, like some of the genres, you get to learn about their history, how they evolved into uh, having certain types of mechanics. So some of them, uh, like the ones in European don't have a lot of like face-to-face -face combat and stuff. So you have to design uh, a bunch of different board games in small teams with uh, uh, different, uh, trying to fit it into the genre of either like American games, European games, and a couple other types of things. And I think one of the best parts about this course is in your groups of people, uh, it doesn't have to be the same that you make the games with. You Every week you have to be playing different uh of different board games and uh that allows you both to uh get the mechanics from them and have the group uh i know like for the end of it you can uh go back and design uh further onto one of your previous things i especially recommend this among the other ones because a lot of them a lot of the design classes uh you're kind of just allowed to do whatever at least that's how they currently are, because a uh, professor that taught some of the higher level ones um, is uh, not working here anymore, so they're a little in limbo at the current moment. 
So IMGD 2900 and 3900, which uh, are design classes, are currently in between uh, professors. So they're not nailed down, but this is going to be the same professor. So I like this class a lot. Oh, oh. did you check this one, Bubba? Oh, yeah, I did forget to mention IMGD 3101, which is 3D modeling too. It's uh, recommended by tech art majors because in this one, you actually learn rigging, one of the hardest things to do in 3D art and, and arguably one of the most useful. Uh, plus, most students took it with Farley. Farley is really eccentric and good at his job, and you have a good time there. That is all I will tell you. I'm not a 3D art student, so yeah. Now, these are just some recommendations for different concentrations, but, you know, these are just one course, and you'll probably need to take multiple courses. Um, I recommend for anyone who's looking to power the schedule or plan things out, just grab a senior and just be like, what courses should I take for this concentration? And either they can answer or they can point you to someone who can. Or you can go to steering office hours every Friday afternoon, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. It's full of comments. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, moving on from classes. Um, there is one avenue that is not often given, not often made it readily apparent to you all, but is a great avenue for you to fill out credits, and that's ISPs. Um, if you want to learn something that hasn't been covered by a course, or you want to work, work on a project that isn't quite something you're part of, but you know you want to work on the project and they want you, ISPs are really the way to do that. Um, you find a professor of any department, and they can sign off, they can Technically, they can send off in any class department, but you're going to have a tough time convincing um, Professor Smith to sign off, an, sign off an art class. And you'll have a tough time professing, convincing Professor Farley, Professor Farley, Professor Cherry to sign off on a CS. Uh, technically, it's all the same department, but you want to usually find one that fits the actual need of the class. Um, there's a lot of great examples of ISP going on at the school. Um, last year, there was a lot of cross um, pollination with. Um, Students in lower years doing ISPs on MQP projects, which we'll talk more about later on. But it's an opportunity for you to do more project work. And honestly, that's one of the best things you can do. Get more uh, work on your portfolios. So that's honestly the most important thing you guys can do at a starter, le starter level. But can you get credit for ISPs? ISPs are all about getting credit. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, if you can make a case that this ISP can replace this class, they'll sign off on it. If you just need a generic credit and you say this ISP can fill a generic credit, they will also sign off on it. Um, it's all about essentially finding a professor that's warned, that's gonna agree with you and be willing to put in the effort to ISP something. So make friends with your professors. Yes, that is something we, we did neglect. Don't avoid them, talk to them. They're people uh -huh. and they can help you uh, build your networks, yes. Not Other specifically. Than, uh, a, I, 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 don't, I don't know anything about this, so this is, this, okay. this is fun. I'm also kind of biased because I'm currently the student at this point for it. Um, but IMGD, microphone please. Handled. IMGD slash AR3200 is called Interactive Electronic Arts. Uh, you work in the class specifically with uh, kind of electronic components, specifically Makey Makey, uh, where you essentially just turn everyday objects into capacitive touch keyboards or whatever. Um, and you also explore more microcontrollers uh, and electronics, for example, like uh, Adafruit's like Circuit Playground, using Python for some of them. Uh, you do use Max 8 for the main part of your, uh, the main part of like your interactive experiences, but kind of working on interactive media uh, while also creating some 3D and cool 2D art. Highly recommended. I don't know if I double counted it, but I had a lot of fun in this class, particularly uh, exploring more stuff with micro so yeah let me know if you have any questions after this about it and that just kind of proves my point that you grab any upperclassmen and they will tell you about a class you should take so talk to one talk to the faculty make friends with the faculty Two, talk to the upperclassmen we're not as scary as we say also just talk to each other learn uh what courses are good what courses are bad um like you know there's no bad courses all right um <laughs> 
you know, our community yeah. is a community, um, so help each other when you can. <laughs> um, next topic we're going to talk about is the locations available to IMG students. Um, technically, most of these things are in Fuller, but not everything. Um, we're kind of insular in the sense that you can stay in Fuller for the whole day, like I just did today, and be in 30 different places. Um, some of the locations that are very important, um, the lab you're in right now, FL222, is the IMG lab. Um, that means IMG students have priority. They have they should always have card access, and you should be able to come in here at any time, swipe in through the front door into here, anytime, and work on projects. That being said, card access is not great. If you ever have issues with card access, email you should Alice. email Allison Darling, the operations manager. Um, you're going to run into card access during your time here. That's going to happen. Um, just be ready to email people. <laughs> Um, similarly to this ING lab, there's the Bizarro Zone beneath Fuller, not in the basement, but in the sub-basement of the Zoo Lab. Um, I want you to go all the way down the stairs and then take a right down a second set of stairs. That's like a very, very sketchy stairwell, but um, that's the sub-basement. That's where a lot of it actually our spaces are, funnily enough. Uh, the Zoo Lab is another IMG-specific space where you can go in. It has the same Wacom tablets as we do here, and you can work on projects any hour of the night. Um, I've definitely pulled one or two all-nighters in that room. Um, don't be scared by the lack of lights and windows and whirling elevator sounds down the hallway. You are going the right way. Honestly, that's a plus for IMGD students. I feel like that's all Wi-Fi in there. Yeah, you, you cannot have Wi-Fi. Um, additionally, in the sub-basement, there is the Creative Collab Lab, a.k.a. the Sprinkler Room. Um, it's another IMG space where you can go and work at any time. Um, again, your card access may not work. Um, I think I have a conspiracy theory that it's only bachelors of art students that have card access, and I've yet to prove otherwise. So yeah. feel free to prove me wrong. Uh, but no, it's a great space. There's also some additional tools there. I think they did some uh, motion capture in that room, and obviously there's a huge green screen in that photo that you can see. Um, so additional locations. Also in the sub-basement, there is the audio booth. Um, we have an audio booth that you can use to record things. Um, unfortunately, you don't have card access because it doesn't have a card access that you must come by the IMG um, lab or offices, as you can see in the middle. Talk to Allison about getting a key to borrow for that room. Um, you can go in there and record things. They have a nice little audio booth, and it's well soundproofed. I'm, I'm seeing some, some very surprised faces back. This is, this is what this information is for. Um, the IMG offices are a little easier to find than everything else in this list because, well, they have a big old IMG on the top. On the basement of Fuller, we have pretty much the entirety of that basement dedicated towards IMG offices. Again, pop by whenever and talk to your professors during office hours. Um, remember that culture of your faculty are people you should be talking to and just kind of swing by and talk to them. I know it sounds scary, but that's kind of how you do mm -hmm. things. <laughs> that's how you uh, can like do all of these school projects. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about how the net networking helps to make more opportunities later on. Um, the Dodo Lab is another lab because clearly we didn't have enough of those. Um, none of us have card access to that, though. The difference is Dodo Lab is in Unity Hall, and that's a studio space where the Ideas Studio runs. Um, we're going to talk more about what Ideas is later on, but essentially it is IMG space that's been given to a studio, and we'll talk what that entails um, during the second section. Um, the IMG and CS Grad Lounge is also in the basement of Fuller. Um, you will not have card access unless you're a graduate. Uh, but if you are a graduate, you'll be able to go in there and talk to other IMG and CS students and just kind of hang around whenever you have free time. Um, same thing for the Interaction Lab, except think of that but for work. Um, IMG and CS Grad students have personal desk space in, that in the Interaction Lab. Um, you sometimes see certain events being hosted in the Grad Lounge or the Interaction Lab. So it's important that you know where they are, but if you're not a grad student, you're probably not going to go there unless for those events. Cool. Um, that's all the locations. We are going to do a rapid fire through a lot of software now just to get you up to speed on what tools are available to you as an IMG student and also what desktop icons you should recognize. <laughs> um, first off is all these game engines. So you should relatively have heard about Unity and Unreal at this point. Um, if not, come to the workshops tomorrow and Sunday. Um, but Unity is a very modular and lightweight engine installed in pretty much every machine in the IMG labs and the Zoo Lab. Um, you can also access it through the Unity Hub on desktops, and it's free to install yourself. It's just a little bit of licensing that you quickly click through and you're, you own Unity. Um, Use your uh, student email uh, for the um, 
personal like and like education licenses? No, it's actually no education really? license for really? you. Yeah. I might um, Uni is just free personal use. Um, you should make an account if you ever want to use one, and it's very simple. Unreal is actually kind of moving to a similar boat where it's also free for use. Um, you no longer need a student account. You can oh, use that's it and download it. Um, Unreal is installed in all the lab computers here and in the Zo Zozo lab. The Zoo lab, um, it is definitely a less modular game engine than Unity. So if you try to run it on a lightweight laptop, you may find your laptop getting very hot. Um, that's kind of one of the bigger reasons you'll use labs, labs for the computers. Um, you need access to Unreal for certain classes and your laptops will not run it. Manny? You will also, if you bring a unit, uh, sorry, uh, you'll get into your laptop, you will also find it running at one space the speed that it normally does. Make sure to plug your laptop in to like update it. Turn it into a desktop. Jacob, you have a question? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Um, it's another game engine alternative to Unity that is installed in these computers. It's Godot. Um, and Godot is completely free. Um, unlike Unity and Unreal, the act of publishing a game gets you some like, hey, how much money do I have to pay them at a certain point? Godot is permanently free even when you publish things. I think it's free under the MIT open license. Um, and it's very lightweight. It's like 30 megabytes just to download the whole engine. Yeah. That being said, you will not see classes in Godot usually. Um, it's optional for some classes to use Godot, but you won't see any classes taught explicitly in Godot. That being said, it's still installed. Uh, Quine is another course, I think it's uh, a course, another um, engine that I think is used for some writing courses specifically. Yeah. It is a website and desktop application that is completely free. Um, it's like a text-based engine. Yeah, for example, in uh, I believe it's now IMG 3450, basically writing characters for games. Uh, when Professor Schneider uh, teaches it, he usually runs you through the ropes of how to use Twine in the last one third of the course. And for your final project for that class, you'll be essentially working with the team to make a text based adventure game on Twine. Um, now, the big thing for artists um, to Adobe or not to Adobe? That is the question. That is the question. You will see that Adobe products are installed on all the ING lab computers. Um, but you will also notice that there is some weird licensing issues. If you're on an IMG lab computer and you're an IMG student, you should have access to all Adobe products through the education account. When you, when you sign into Adobe, you choose educational account and you sign into your WI account. That being said, that will not work on any of your producer computers. It only works on IMG computers. So like the, this lab, the Zoo lab, you can sign in to Adobe products, no issue. Um, as you may, not, may or may not know, Adobe is a very expensive subscription if you want a personal license to work on outside of this lab. Um, it's, it's a little bit of money, it's a lot of money. Um, you can sometimes ask for personal licenses in certain courses that require you to use Adobe products. Um, do you have something to say about that? Uh, yeah, for example, I was taking uh, 2D Animation 1 in my sophomore year, and because I uh, wanted to be able to use Adobe Animate in my own uh, laptop, with my student license, obviously, all I did was I essentially just sent IT services an email telling them about that, and it just worked. However, I am not sure if they still allow that in this day and age, so. Excuse me? You can actually uh, find out what applications are offered uh, through WPI um, via the uh, WPI uh, texting, uh, not texting, uh, the hub. Um, it has a library of all of it. Uh, you'll probably still have to go uh, to the IT office in the library just to get it downloaded. But hey, you can check if it's there before you go. Um, as for some non-Adobe alternatives, you're going to be hard-pressed to find things pre-installed to these machines. Um, there's a bunch of alternatives to Photoshop and Illustrator listed here. Um, I'm going to let you guys talk about oh, yeah. one of them in a second. But uh, Inkscape is the only software that's actually installed to these machines that is a Adobe alternative. Uh, it's Adobe. It's an alternative for Illustrator. Um, I don't think there's a good alternative that just installed on every machine for Photoshop. And now I'll turn it over to Jeff. Okay, cool. Uh, Photoshop, uh, Photoshop alternatives. Uh, fun facts: for most of my two ER courses, I did not use Photoshop whatsoever. I uh, instead I used Clip Studio Paint, which uh, at this point is still very much a one-time purchase, as long as you're getting the 1.x versions instead of the 2.x versions, which is a subscription service. But 1.x is all you need. Uh, but yeah, it does everything Photoshop has. And in my opinion, it's more artist oriented, unlike Photoshop, which is a little bit more graphic design oriented. And uh, 
Clip Studio Paint also allows you to um, animate in things if you purchase the Clip Studio Paint EX license. So that is Photoshop and animate together in one app. And fun fact for tomorrow's uh, 2D art workshop from 5 to 5.30, I will be uh, walking through the basic pipelines of working with Clip Studio Paint. So see you there. Another plug out of the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, there's also a lot of 3D art software that you'll have access to in these cloud computers, probably even more than 2D art software. Um, there is some modeling software, 3ds Max and Maya, which are different for reasons that I don't know. Um, that's available on all these machines. Um, there is the free alternative that you can install pretty easily on every computer that you own, Blender. Um, and the more important stuff that I have worked with more, even as a tech student, is Substance Painter and ZBrush. Uh, both of these softwares, I'd recommend that little pen you see on the right, the Wacom pen. Like on tablet pen. Um, if you ever take a 3D modeling course or something along those lines, you'll probably be required to buy a pen like this. Uh, the purpose of it is to allow you to interact directly with the Wacom tablets. Um, I don't believe most of the pens work, but for ZBrush and Substance Painter, these are some very cool softwares you'll have the chance to work with in certain courses. Substance Painter is all about texturing and ZBrush is all about sculpting. And if you want to learn more about these softwares, Jess, when are you running your workshop? My God, I'm glad to ask. Sunday at five to six. Sunday at five to six? That sounds like a great time. I agree. Where's it going to be? Whoa, Fuller 222. Nice. Um, if you have a Wake Up tablet pen, feel free to bring it to follow along. If not, it's going to be more of a live demo you'll see. Um, just one of the, the pains of proprietary technology. <laughs> More software because I'm not an artist. I can talk about software. Oh yeah. Um, source control. A lot of you should know source control by the time you get to the end of this. I had done it. If you never use source control, it's a software that is used by developers to collaborate on work via the cloud. Um, essentially, though, it just means I need to get the files in your computer. You need to get the files in my computer. Um, a lot of the lab computers, actually all of them should have source control installed in the form of GitHub Desktop, which is a very UI-friendly version of GitHub and Git. Um, for artists and people who aren't specifically tech programmers, that's usually fine. Um, tech programmers, I'd recommend, or tech students, I'd recommend to go a little bit deeper into source control and learning the actual specifics of Git command line. Um, and talking about GitHub already, um, if you are a student, you have access to specific um, and very cool features with GitHub Pro. It uh, doesn't matter what student you are, as long as you have an email account that's tied to a school, you can usually apply to get a lot of educational licenses, one of which is GitHub Pro, but the second of which is JetBrains. Um, I'll let Tate talk about this because JT is a huge fan of JetBrains. Okay, so uh, JetBrains is a really uh, cool like IDE uh, publisher, I guess. Um, What's an IDE? An IDE is uh, essentially... Um, a coder's playground uh, is where you write um, any uh, code. It helps like with formatting and all of that uh, stuff. Um, I really like to use Rider because it can connect uh, to Unity um, and it can tell you like what um, like what uh, assets are calling what functions and do a whole bunch of useful uh, stuff. It's free if you get um, an education license. And there are so many IDEs, um, it's crazy. Um, IntelliJ is probably what you're gonna use for uh, Java, PyCharm, that's more Python, and WebStorm, that's more web dev. Uh, so HTML and JavaScript. Now, there are some free alternatives that I'm sure some of you are familiar with. Um, Visual Studio offers some great tools in Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio Community. Um, purple and blue essentially. Um, these are tools that sometimes see great support for certain things, but sometimes kind of fall off because Microsoft is great with maintaining its software. Um, I recommend take, taking a look at both JetBrains and Visual Studio Code and seeing which one you prefer. Uh, Visual Studio Community will be definitely something you get familiar with as a tech dev in uh, IMG 3000. Uh, and the last thing we need to talk about is Reaper, which is a, the DAW, pretty much installed, the digital audio workstation installed to all the lab computers. Um, it is free asterisk in the sense that it has a mod, uh, payment mod, model similar to WinRAR, if you remember that. Um, it'll tell you it's free. It'll tell you no, it'll tell you it's not free. It'll say you have to pay for it. But you can also just exit out. So don't worry about that. 
That's right. There's uh, a time limit, but if you just delete a uh, Reaper and re-download it, it resets that time limit. The time limit is actually what I'm talking about. After the oh. time limit, you can just press X and it will go. Really? Yeah, okay. it's just free, but All right. you pay for it if you're going professional. Nice mm -hmm. touch. For the um, for the recording, I definitely don't pirate Reaper because I can't pirate it. Because it's free. Yeah, it's free. Um, we're at the midway point, so I just wanted to turn our attention towards some additional resources before we break for a quick five minutes to get more pizza. Um, there are a couple things that you probably want to know about as an IG student. We're going to plug the IG Discord, where you can join that with a QR code. We're going to plug the IMG Discord, which you cannot join unless you're explicitly part of the major. Um, and then there is also our YouTube, where we'll be posting this workshop as long as as well as other workshops this year. And there, lastly, is the IMG Hub. The IMG Hub, I'm going to open up the actual hub, is a grad student project from last year, or two years ago now, mm -hmm. um, developed by a uh, grad student, or now alumni named Michael. Michael. Um, you'll hear about him the more, the, you'll hear about him more as you stay here longer. Mm -hmm. um, Michael developed a essentially a wiki that we can all share to share information and document a lot of the information about IMG. Uh, feel free to visit this site whenever you have questions about certain things or whenever you want to make a post about something new that you're trying. Mm -hmm. Like um, maybe you're maybe you're doing workshop weekends. Um, maybe but, you know some new IMGD lore. Maybe you do know some, but um, it's a great tool for us to have on top of everything else. Uh, I guess I guess we should tell them about that. Yeah. Um, um, nice cool. little segue. This is not going to give me the right thing. Is it? This is, this is, oh, I'm on Bing. I'm on Bing. Why are you on Bing? What is Bing? Thrombus. No, no one's going to thrombus. Okay. So, a uh, nice little segue before we go more into some more stuff. Trumpets. Um, it's kind of a meme for IMG. It's like... He's it, a little guy. He's a little guy, and I don't know how to describe him beyond that. Do not draw his hat backwards. That's a symbol of bad luck. Hat forward is a symbol of good luck. He was created by Kate O'Glean. Uh, I'm not sure... Trumpets. Yes. Mm -hmm. Feel free to read all this. This is on the old IMG uh, WK wiki. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you, Trumbus, yes, the hat. Not invoke his name if you ever see Trumbus drawn on a non WPI uh, board, that was KO Glean. So, yeah, if you see Trumbus in the wild, that's a rare occasion. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right, I've seen it. I've You've seen it? it? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Game <laughs> All right, we're gonna move. <laughs> I, was I was there, there man. <laughs> you have to believe me. All right, moving on to part two projects and career. Succeeding me on your classes. Wow. Um, so let's talk about some events that you can do. The first and most obvious one that you've probably all received emails for and ignored because it's during your class time is colloquiums. You should go to colloquiums. Um, it's part of the culture of getting to know your faculty. Um, colloquiums are really good for that because it's usually faculty giving a talk about something that actually matters. Uh, I'm not just plugging that because the next colloquium is IGA talking for a little bit. Um, I mean, like, you should go and see things that's just interesting. And, and talking to your professors isn't scary. Just listen to them talk for a little bit and watch them be passionate about stuff. Um, last week was the September 6th Monty Scope talk. We'll talk more about who Monty is in a few slides, but this was a major talk. If you missed that, I'm so sorry. His, pre <laughs> His yeah. presentation will be put on Discord eventually. Nick, did you get a chance to talk to him about that? I forgot I email that place. Yeah. Um, one of the major things to keep in mind, though, is if you are not doing something during the hours of 12 to 1 p.m. on Wednesday, you have no reason not to be going cold if you're an IMG student. That's, that's, that's how I'll say it. Um, you should be at these late third class. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, they're actually really helpful. Uh, just to meet um, other IMGD students um, and Pretty much just chill. Yeah. They are always in SL411, which you cannot see with the Zoom screen recording. SL411 with the exception of the Monty Scope talk because it was so big it was in full or lower. Mm -hmm. um, but every other week it'll be in SL411, which is the Salisbury lab literally right behind all of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. uh, but colloquiums are definitely not the only event you will see in IMG. Oh, that was supposed to be more dramatic. Welcome to the actual IMG event calendar. This is burned into my brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, for the re for reference. reference, the FEST IQP, which Tate originally mentioned a few slides back, um, is the IQP that runs inside of IMG that runs a bunch of these events, including Alpha Fest, Joy Art, PAX East, and Showfest. 
That sounds like a lot, this. Um, but these events are really great for the IMG community and you should be going to every single one of them full stop. Um, I don't mean you should be going if you have time. You should be going if you're not doing anything. I mean, you should be going. You should um, make time to go because yes. uh, they're really helpful. You support each other and uh, you can even get um, play testing credit. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. I'll, I'll be honest. All right. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. School doesn't uh, matter. Never mind. Yeah, it, um, I'll be honest. No, this 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 whole we're throwing away the persona of the first half. The first persona. half was all about school. This part's all about no. This is about projects. Um, this is about your career. This is about you. Um, the events that we host in IMG are really good um, and really fun, and you should come to them because games are fun at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, the first event is a little new, I'll admit, so I can't shill too hard for this one. But Protofest is the brainchild of the IMG shadow government, aka the community council. Um, it's a very early form of other events in this, but it's a casual thing to come on by and see what MQPs are brewing. Um, but some of the bigger ones, which have asterisks because their dates aren't finalized, are AlphaFest. So AlphaFest is the first major event we have in the community. Um, this has been running for about... A long time. A long time, longer than I can remember. <laughs> um, it's a project showcase of alphas, and that includes MQPs, student personal projects, class projects, a lot of things. And it's open to the bigger WCAG community. Um, usually hosted inside of the Innovation Studio. This is a essentially a three-hour period where people are just setting up game booths and demoing games. And it's always a lot of fun because you have no idea what IMG students are working on until you actually go see it yourself. And you can demo your own game. You yes. just have to email the Fest IQP. Yeah, announcements will go out as they always do, probably in the middle, start of the middle of the term about submitting to, to Alfest. Um, I'd recommend if you have a project you want to show and you're proud of and you want to get feedback on, submit it. There's it's no harm place. to it. Yeah, everyone's super chill and accepting, so. Even if it's in its rough st stages, that's totally fine. It's an alpha. It's like the alpha first. Yeah. Um, the next event that's relatively like really new is and only on once is Jorit. Um, Jorit is a event that me and the rest of the Fest IQP, Tate, Jeff, Sky, and Jade McAvoy, all revitalized from Becker College. So we're gonna take a quick step back to talk about Becker for a little bit. Um, for those of you that don't know, there was another college a long, long time ago in, uh, in the API. A called few Becker away. College. Um, we'll Becker College didn't do so hot with COVID. And Becker College kind of went away. And we kind of absorbed Becker College. It did do just too hot before COVID. Yeah. We were not showing throwing shade. Yeah. It was COVID. Um, we absorbed Becker, which means we have South Village and other things like that now. Yeah, but it also means we took on George, which was an intercollegiate game art competition. Um, I think it was originally, mm -hmm. oh, originally it was Jen and Jordan, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, you may hear more about those names later on. But uh, originally it was hosted at Becker College as a showcase of student game art um, that they bring in judges and have it compete and essentially choose winners. Uh, last year we revitalized it to run in the Boston area because WPI has a location in Boston. For um, uh, like one or two years more. Yes. Well, let them dream. Yeah. Um, Sorry. The, the event is essentially, then it was 13 colleges across the Northeast, over 200 submissions. Uh, we did a game art competition where we brought in industry judges um, and okay. cost you nothing to submit if you're an artist. Um, I think the Fest IQP will be running it again this year. And if you're an artist, you should think about already what types of game art you'd like to submit. Also, um, last year we did have cash prizes. We had about uh, $850 totaling in cash prizes. Um, nine industry sponsors um, and portfolio reviews. Yes. Um, done by Demiurge artists. So it really brings a lot of industry pros out. So even if uh, you don't get selected as a finalist, you should still go, still network. If you do get selected by a finalist, um, you're like 10 steps ahead um, every other art student. Like, and hey, in terms of if networking. you like the pizza from today, that pizza was much better because it's in Boston mm -hmm. and not catered by Charles. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next big event that comes up is the MQP Pitch Day. Um, this is another one, like all of these, that you should go to regardless of requirements. So if you're a junior, you will have to go to MQP today. Otherwise, things are going to go really poorly for you. Uh, <laughs> essentially, MQP today is the day where IMG students have the opportunity to pitch their own MQPs and join MQP teams. Um, you need to get greenlit as an IMG MQP, which means you need faculty advisors to sign off on it. And you need to be able to essentially make an argument for why this should run. Um, if you're not a junior, you should still go. And the reason being, you want to see which projects are running next year because you may not, you may be interested in ISP for certain things. 
as a student in any year, ISP is a great opportunity, um, especially as you're end, coming towards the end of your freshman and sophomore years, you're in a great position to ISP on projects the following year. Uh, if you are a junior, um, I recommend to start thinking about your MQP now. Just not like... There's another slide for that. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of ourselves. Yes. We will talk a lot more about what an MQP is soon. Um, there's another event, PAX East. And PAX East is a very wonderful opportunity because this is the one that you all probably know. Uh, PAX East is, the, of course, a convention in Boston that takes place every year, showing off video games and pretty much the state of the industry. Um, what's really cool is WPI, somehow we convinced them long, long ago to pay for a booth for ING. And every year we have a WPI ING booth at PAX. And we get to show off student games. And it's great because, well, it's PAX. Uh, <laughs> the Fest IGP typically opens up submissions middle, late C term. And you can submit any projects you're working on to be shown off at PAX East. Uh, that being said, you should do it because you get to show off something at PAX East. That being said, you need to put some effort in to make sure your projects are ready for seat time. So start thinking ahead of time to be ready. And if you really want to get into PAX East, start thinking about what games would do well at PAX East. People aren't going to play a 30 minute visual novel or a 30 minute to an hour visual novel at PAX East. They're more likely to play like a uh, 15 minute uh, platformer. So just keep that in mind. Five minute platformer. Hmm? Five minute platformer. Five minute platformer, yeah. The last event that you should know about as an IMG student is Showfest. Imagine Alpha Fest, but then kind of just pump some steroids into it a lot. Um, Showfest is finished projects, which already makes it a lot more daunting for some people to make a project get to the finish point. But it's also interviews with professionals and alumni. Uh, what happens is every MGP team shows off at Showfest as a requirement, and they have um, the Fest IGP team organizes interviews where alumni and professionals from the industry matching to your topic will come and talk to you on our Twitch stream about the game you made. Um, it's a really cool opportunity to talk professionally about something that you worked on as a student, which you don't always get the opportunity for, uh, which makes it really cool to either attend the event in person, watch, or watch the live stream. Uh, but if you're all on campus, do you, you need to be attending the person. Come on. Um, any questions about the events we've gone over? So there's some things about projects you need to know about. Um, these are only four of the five projects you need to know about, but we should run over them all the same. Um, the first thing that you're probably going to get experience with are class projects. Um, there's a lot of classes that have you make a game or something related to a game, such as IMD 3000, 3500, and 4000, 4500, which pair up together. Um, these projects are great for taking a concept that you just learned or a, like a restriction that you're working around and making a project there. Obviously, it's not ideal circumstances because it's during class, which means you have a set time limit usually, you're restricted to certain technologies, team formation may not be everyone you want to work with, but it is still an opportunity to take something you worked on in class and make it into a portfolio piece. What's the portfolio piece? We'll talk about that later. Um, there's also studio projects, which are specific classes designed only at making a game. Um, these ones are a little less restrictive when it comes to you know, the criteria of making a game, but it does allow you to design a, a project throughout the duration of a class that can be a little more free. Um, typically, these are higher level IMG courses like 4,900 and 5,000, um, but it's definitely worth checking them out even as an underclassman if you have time in your schedule to fit them. Um, personal projects are something that you will ignore during your time at API, which is a shame because, you know, you got to set yourself out somehow. <laughs> uh, every other student in this room will be doing class and studio projects, but not everyone will be taking on personal projects. Um, that's kind of what separates people from just flow, falling into the flow of the school that we live in. Um, personal projects are great for doing during certain breaks between terms, summers, or whenever. If you can find the time to do it on top of the terms course though, you should. Uh, personal projects are, of course, the most spring of all of these because, hey, I have as much time as I need, I can work with whoever I want, I can do whatever I want. Of course, that trade-off comes with less restrictions and not necessarily having failure points. You can work on a personal project for 10 years and get nowhere. Um, whereas if you work on a class project for 10 years, there's a bigger problem. You could work on a personal project for seven years and make a really uh, nice game like Stardew Valley. Yes. 
But that's the exception, not the rule. Yeah, Seth. seven. Exception, not the rule. Yeah. Another project type that you're going to learn about are yeah, game jams. Twice, um, so if you're twice. curious about what game jams are, come to our colloquium talk next Wednesday. We'll be talking more about game jams, how they matter to you, and uh, the rules of game jams. Essentially, though, game jams are short time spans where you are making a game according to a theme. Um, there's a lot of famous game jams out there, like Global Game Jam, Loom Dare, and GMTK. Um, but IGA is right up there. Um, they're totally optional, and they usually we usually host our game jams over the course of weekends during the term. Um, that being said, if you are looking to make a project real quick and you want to get some experience learn, uh, testing some of the things you've learned in your classes, this is the opportunity to do so. But there is one major project type we haven't talked about yet. That's the MQP. So the MQP for ING students tends to be, well, step back. MQPs overall are major qualifying projects at API. You've probably heard that shoved at your head a thousand times during the application process for WPI and anything else you looked at. Um, that sounds so boring, but for ING, it can be pretty fun because a lot of times ING MQPs tend to be games. Um, they can take up to a whole year, depending on you know the conditions of your major. If you're adult majoring, you need four terms. If you're single majoring, you can ISP in your own project for longer. Um, but MQPs are essentially, for the most part, games on G. You can do other things. Um, like art books? You can do art books, you can do games, you can do uh, interactive, like, board thing. There's a really, really unique interactive puzzle mystery thriller book that's hard to describe. That was from two years ago. Um, but there's a lot of stuff you can see in IMG for MQPs. Manny? Um, given the amount of overlap between uh, IMGD, Bachelor's of Science, and uh, CS for the double major. Could I like take the role as programmer for my and manage to? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, so what yes. happens when you double major in IMG and CS or in any two majors at the school, regardless of IMG, is you have to do a MQP that fits both. So you need professors that sign off of both, and you need to do four terms rather than three. Okay. I was just. Yeah. Yeah. Order. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. But so if you're double majoring and you want to take an MQP or label to the but uh, you have to do it over the course of four terms instead of just one. You can do it over the course of one term if you overload, technically. You just have to have four classes worth of credit. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, we should have clarified that. Yes, it's four classes worth of credit, not the whole year. Uh, are we allowed to bring projects we were doing before? Like, yeah. let's say, yeah. yes. Like, so, Imperius actually Imperius had a Imperius actually actually development uh, prior to being pitched. Uh, Imperius was already on the Steam Greenlight page. Um, mm -hmm. Or, is it called Greenlight? Uh -huh. I don't play games. Um, it, was a, it was a video game. It was a video game. Um, no, but you, you can absolutely bring projects you've already been working on. Just remember, though, MQB pitch that you have to sell people on the project to get them to work on it. And students do not like coming on the projects halfway through and not having ownership of what they do. So, I don't know. a former team before and yeah. like convinced them to do this. Um, but no, Tate, you were talking about before. Mm -hmm. um, it's great for juniors to start thinking about MQPs now. Um, it sounds daunting, but you need to start early. Can I talk about this a bit? Please. All right. So, along with thinking about uh, what you want to work on for MQP, um, it is a great idea to start forming teams if you're a junior uh, at the moment for MQPs. Um, look at other people's work in your classes, um, see how they work, do a game jam together, uh, learn if you work well together, if you can uh, collaborate successfully, um, and then uh, I always suggest you brainstorm together. That way everyone has um, some ownership in the game. Caleb, yeah, you got a question on here? Uh, Did you call him Caleb? Is not Kelly. His, his name is Casey. Casey. Nick. They both have C's in them and five uh, letters, and that's so close. <laughs> okay. Um, I had two questions, and I'm only remembering one of them. I'll just say the first one. Um, what are your guys' MQPs or projects? Uh, Nick and I are doing uh, Birds and Breakfast. Also, uh, Birds and Breakfast. Uh, uh, <laughs> Birds and Breakfast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Otherwise known as Operation Breadcrumbs, and Jeff is working on a really cool art book. Yeah, concept art book stuff, collection of characters, environment stuff that could be pitched for a cartoon or a video game. A great example of IMG projects that aren't games. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're not restricted to games. Mm -hmm. It's also interactive media. Yeah, and there's also uh, this thing called Robot Escape Room that happens like every year. I have never experienced it, but from from what I've heard, it's pretty cool. And if you are interested in it, you can always consult Professor Kato for that. Yes, Robot Escape Room, of course, being famous for mm -hmm. triple degree interaction, RBECS, IMGD. Um, if you want to triple major, God forbid, I think you could take five, <laughs> five terms and do that. Uh, but you wouldn't sleep in those terms. Well, you wouldn't sleep for the years beforehand either. All right, Case. Uh, I remember the other one. Would you recommend working with like close friends on big projects like MTP? It like depends on um, like your relationship with them. Definitely uh, dynamics, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we know people who you say, yeah, I, I can't, I know I can't work with close friends, so I won't. And that's great if you can recognize that ahead of time. Uh, that's also why you test with smaller projects before time to see, hey, does this harm the dynamics of, of people? Yeah. yeah. And that's where studio-based classes like, you know, IMV 1001 and the focus pair come to work because that's when you get to form teams before you have to decide who to pair with in MQP. Um, if you want to hear some uh, horror stories of when, uh, like, you work with friends, um on mqps and on bigger projects Find um and talk after the recorded session <laughs> yeah Literally, uh do not name drop <laughs> farley please do not name drop i'm just saying farley calm down but talk to me we also have horror stories of personal projects yes and you will not find any of that recorded moving on <laughs> so we talked a lot about projects but why do I care about projects? Why do I even want to work on things? What if I just want to sit in my room and play video games? IMG moment. Mm -hmm. um, well, the reason why you need to work on projects is because otherwise you, you won't have a resume, you won't have a job in IMG, or, and that's the worst outcome. Imagine spending four years here and then not, mm -hmm. not getting a game job. Um, a resume is very important to this, as is a portfolio. We're going to go over each of those and what that entails, why you should make them, when you should make them, and how you should. A resume, as you have all heard at this point, is a one page, one page that succinctly encapsulates your skills, experience, education. You will hear a lot of people say maybe you should have two pages if like you're looking next. for a gain of job. You should not. Um, unless you are experienced in the the, uh, the field, you should drop down to one page. Um, even if CDC tells you otherwise, um, this is directly from Monty, which means it's it's gospel. I, I also told you to. Yeah, no, that's page. why that's why I switched to it. Yeah, yeah that, sure, that's why. Yeah, okay. that's why I switched to it because of Monty. Yeah. <laughs> um, you'll hear essentially if you go get so as a WPI student, you always have access to the CDC and UND Hall to get resume feedback. Great, you should do that. They'll proofread stuff. They'll check to make sure everything makes sense, and they'll essentially make sure it's a professional resume. They are wrong about IMG specific things. They'll say two pages. We have professional advice that says one page. Those bold and asterisks is if you are really confident you can fill two pages and not pad it, do two pages. If you are not, do one page. Um, a great resource uh, for whenever you're making your resume or portfolio is the IMGD Discord or the IGDA Discord. We have um, Discord channels uh, specifically for portfolio reviews. It's great. Um, you get to talk to alumni um, and other students about your portfolio and resumes and also professors. Um, so it's a really good resource. You can also just ask your professor uh, personally to uh, review your website or resume uh, before you send it out for job opportunities. Remember that culture of knowing your professors, it pays off. Yeah. So why should you have a resume? Because you need one. How should I make a resume? <laughs> We're just gonna skip over that. How should I make a resume? Um, you can find templates readily available online. You can Google resume template, you're going to find one. Um, you can also just make one in a word processor very easily. Make sure uh, to check um, a, like recommended uh, templating uh, site, just because um, depending on how you structure it, uh, the um, AI that processes uh, your resume might just not uh, put it through the company, yeah. uh, which is unfortunate. So. If you made a resume, you got, got a bunch of good work on it, you should at least make it past the AI. Um, even if you don't have anything to add to it, you should have a resume essentially ready for spring of your freshman. Um, sounds daunting, but trust me, it's a lot easier to modify a resume you already have than to say, well, it's senior year, I need to make a resume on top of everything else. That and a portfolio. Well, I don't know. And a portfolio. <laughs> a portfolio, what is that? Well, it's a website that demonstrates your work and project contributions in greater detail. 
you have to get right into the, the nitty gritty of their projects by showing pictures first um, and essentially making people care about visiting the website. Um, why should I have a website? Well, game developer positions especially will require it. Um, you can get around it in a lot of other positions. If you're looking for software, if you're looking for uh, a couple other types of jobs related to IMG, maybe. But if you're going for game development, it's you need a portfolio. Yeah. Um, every every application you have will ask for a portfolio, and those that don't will look and find you don't have one. Um, how do you make a portfolio? Well, if you're a bachelor of science student, um, creating your own website is a really good showcase of skills, as well as it should fall into your discipline by taking some of your CS courses that you need to take. Use um, uh, your WebWare project to make your portfolio. Yes. If you take CS 4241, you can get an intro to JavaScript and take WebWare, and that's a good way to get one. Also, some IMGD classes require that you uh, make a portfolio to show off your projects. That's another great way to start making a portfolio. Yes. Um, but how, if I'm a BA student, do I get a portfolio? Use a CMS or a template. Um, or, ask a BS or, ask a, or ask a BS student to do it for you. That's what I did. <laughs> uh, I said a CS student. Yes. If you are a BA student, you don't really need to worry too much about making your own website, unless you really wanted to get into like web design as a, as a BA, which you could. Um, that'd be a great opportunity. But if you're a BA student that's audio, Use a CMS, focus your skills, on, focus your time on doing other things. Um, Use whatever tool best helps uh, to showcase your work. Now, you may be asking when should I make a portfolio? Um, yes, the, the best, well, yes, the, yeah. the best advice that I've heard that actually motivates people is after your first major personal class project, you need a portfolio as the place to put it. Um, it's better to update a portfolio as you make things rather than, again, at your senior year saying, oh, shoot. I need a portfolio and digging up all the projects you did over the course of the last four years. Yes. Would you say quantity or quality? Quality always. Yeah. Uh, quantity matters very little. Yeah, because HR or any department you uh, submit your resume to, they have thousands of those to look over. So you want to make sure that they don't spend too much time scrolling or clicking. Mm -hmm. If you guys uh, ever want someone to review your portfolio or help you structure it, I'm a nerd for portfolios. Um, no, you're a nerd. Well, yeah. specifically for portfolios. Many? Uh, are you allowed to use fan games in your portfolio? Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. Uh, I literally have fan art in my portfolio, so. Okay, sick. So Absolutely so allowed to. Be, like, anything under correct and fair use. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anything you sign NDA for, do not put your portfolio. Yeah, you, yeah. you will get. I just check in with your uh, just check in with <laughs> in with that company, and just make sure. Hey, this is okay. Jacob, uh, kind of on that um, engine wise, because I know that there's a lot of like, especially with Unity. You know what I know it's like you know you're gonna pay a, a lot of money if you're trying to use this in any other way besides like a personal project. Just using it in a portfolio to show off your. That's skills. a personal project. That's a personal project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unity's not going to check your portfolio to see if you use. Well, unless you get really successful. Even then, like that. Oh. If you get hired as the head of Unity, they may check. Um, yeah. Anyone have questions about portfolio resumes? Let's move on. All right. Well, you've got this portfolio resume. What do you do with it? Well, you've got certain opportunities, especially as a student. Um, I'm going to let Tate talk to you a little, a little bit about internships. Hey, y'all. Um, so portfolios and resumes can be really helpful for getting internships. What um, isn't really talked about is just cold emailing. That's another great way uh, just to meet devs, um, talk a bit and see if the company's right for you. That's actually what I did with PetraCore, uh, which is the intern, uh, like, which is a company I interned for over the summer. Um, you can also visit the WPI Career Fair um, it says software is a thumbs up. It's more like, I, maybe you'll find like four jobs at the career fair for software. And I don't think there's been a game studio, find games. <laughs> uh, at the career fair. Uh, so it's like a thousand times more software games, uh, which is like zero. thousand to zero, like one to zero. Um, but, um, oh, and networking. Networking is extremely important. Um, just for me and more industry professionals. Something that like, I'm not gonna recommend to you, uh, but something that I do is whenever there's a mass, like mass digi event, I would go to it. 
because that is an excellent networking. That is an excellent networking um, event. I'm ahead of Nick. No, you're not ahead because you didn't read the slides ahead of time. <laughs> Listen, I was working on the mentee program. Yes. All right, that took a long time. Um, you want me to go over con uh, contract? You want, I can do. Oh uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, another, another one of our stories is our one of our friends that's contract work. Um, how do you get contract work? Well, you network. Um, again, all these are going to go back to networking. Um, contract work is essentially any paid opportunity to do something under contract, which is great because you get paid. Um, not all internships pay you. Some of them do. The good ones do. Um, contract work, you can find it via contract work sites. But that kind of feels scummy because, you know, it is um, much, much better off finding someone who needs contract work and having contract work. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our friends did a contract work last summer to do an animation for a uh, VR, XR. Oh, an Alaskan company. Alaskan company. They did the bird animation. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a great example of when networking pays off because they got the job through a, through a friendly event. Uh, PAX. Um, Chloe uh, Tibbet. Um, she, uh, I was there at the moment. Uh, she, like, and Sk uh, Sky and I uh, were working the booth at PAX. Uh, Chloe saw us and immediately uh, started talking about a, a potential position at the company. So networking is important. Uh, make sure um, if like whoever you want, uh, like any industry professional, they meet a lot of people every event. Make sure they remember you. Not remember you in a bad way. Like, uh, yeah. Do not good, spray good paint way. the car. Um, mm -hmm. but like make a good impression by acting professional and being friendly. Yeah. <laughs> um, one last thing that's an opportunity for students, there's more opportunities after this, trust me, um, is the STAR program. And this is a little closer to home because it's a WPI specific program. Um, this is a fellowship program that gives you a, a summer stipend to work on creative projects in the arts and sciences. Um, research projects, creative projects, it's both. Um, how do you do it? Well, this is networking, but on the, the micro level of your professors. Um, you need to essentially a professor to support whatever project you're going to do and go up to bat for you. Um, for this example, um, Jess, who is no longer with us, they, they left. Uh, they did a modeling and creating diverse characters project over the summer. Um, she got paid. She got to model and create diverse characters and present it um, as part of the STAR program. Um, she had an additional stipend after the fact because her work got noticed and on another level she got a little bit of money by DraftKings. Uh, just to, casually. Just casually. Um, but this wouldn't have happened without her networking with her professors here. I think specifically Farley was the one mm -hmm. who set up this program and everything for, for Jess. So again, you need to be talking to your professors. You need to be making your interest known about programs like this because the earlier you make your interest known, um, the better off you're going to be when they, they think, hey, do I want to put anyone for star? Your professors are here to help you. Like, no. Wow. No, really? No, no, that's absolutely true. Yeah. But you know who else is here to help you? Mass Digi. Mass Digi. Um, this is probably the best thing that came out of Becker um, for us. <laughs> because when Becker collapsed, Mass Digi, uh, we kind of scooped that up. We adopted um, it. Mass Digi is a company supporting game development community and students across the Northeast. If you haven't heard of them, you need to go over to Innovation Studio and introduce yourself to Monty right away. Um, Master G is located right here on campus. Um, it's on the second floor of the Innovation Studio, the Entrepreneur and Innovation Center. That's a lot of innovation. Mm -hmm. um, it's ran by Monty Sharma, who is the uh, operating director or uh, CEO? It's, managing it's director. Managing director. And Tim Lowe, who is... They're, just they're, a lot. They're, all, they're all really, really doing a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Walt also helps out. Professor Walt Yarbrough helps out, and I think originally came from Becker yeah. as part of Mass Digi. Um, But again, these this company, Mass Digi, does pretty much a lot of things, does a lot for us at IG. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to talk more about the programs they run, but uh, there's two links here in QRs. There's the website where if you want to read more about them. But the more important thing is the event, right? Um, Tate was talking about going to Mass Digi events. Yeah. Go. <laughs> if you have other um, things you need to do, Go to the Mass Digi event, specifically. Um, it's going to be one of the most helpful things in terms of networking you can find at WPI. It's going to be, they're also fun. It's usually going down to Boston, um, playing a bunch of games made by uh, industry professionals in like a very communal setting. Um, make friends, uh, take the train, or make friends with a car. 
That's what I did. Make friends with a car? Uh, I'm not a car. No. I'm a uh, person, with a person with a car. With a car. Wow. <laughs> see me for more than who I am. No, for your car. That's yeah. what I see you for. Uh, but there's some specific programs outside of the events they host that are really important to IMA students. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about SIP and DigiStudio. So SIP is a summer innovation program. Um, I think all of us on... Yep. Yeah, all three of us have done SIP, not Con, I was going to say the entire exec board, mm. but um, SIP is great. SIP is fantastic. It is an yeah. intergalactic program with several spots reserved mm. specifically for UK students, which is mm. why we really benefit from having uh, Digi here. Um, it is an opportunity to develop and publish a Unity game for mobile platforms from the ground up. Um, a great thing about uh, SIP is you can, uh, like, you can do SIP with very little experience. Um, like because you'll learn as you go yeah. it's about a 12 uh, week program uh, you're paid to make um games and you get to uh, choose what games you make um as long as they're mobile um so it's honestly a student uh, game dev stream yeah there's nothing comparable in terms of student opportunities as getting paid you, you get paid mm -hmm. getting paid to one you also get housing free on campus uh, uh, which you don't even get for coming to school here um, getting paid to work on the game that you want with a team of students. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, also getting paid to network yeah. uh, and show it off. No one else is going to pay you to help yourself like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, And it honestly feels like summer camp. <laughs> yeah. um, more fun than summer camp. If you are a sophomore or junior or even a freshman, um, you should be applying by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, unless you already have a job locked down in game development, this is the thing you're applying Mm -hmm. um, apply early meet monty ask him to review your portfolio say uh any one of us uh send you give us a heads up first so we can just be like yeah yeah we sent them um but like tell monty uh you know us and we recommend uh, you see him um because that shows you're capable of networking which is pretty much what SIP is about in the end. And ask him questions. Monty, oh, Monty yeah. takes note of good questions. <laughs> also, he likes food. He likes food, exactly. And food. He, he likes good questions and good food. So, so if you bring uh, good questions and good food, not Chartwell's. Uh, oh, that pizza was pretty easy. It, it was passable. Um, you're probably going to be one of Monty's favorite uh, students. Um, but what about preparing for SIP? Um, you can get into SIP with limited experience, but you're definitely better off having it mm -hmm. a little bit beforehand, especially because it gets more and more competitive each year. Um, DigiStudio is the way to get the experience you need to apply with SIP, as well as get familiar with Monty um, and the rest of the Master's program. DigiStudio runs twice, during the fall semester and during the, the spring. semester semester. Spring the semester. Spring semester. Um, DigiStudio is an opportunity for you to work in the published games from last year's SIP program, SIP program, from last year's SIP, and pretty much prepare them for PAX East. Um, if you are applying, you're probably gonna get it. But it's really cool because you get to work on published mobile games and get your name in game credits, which is invaluable towards resume and portfolio. Monty will also know your name, which is um, equally, really helpful. Equally invaluable. Really helpful um, for just getting into SIP. Um, uh, the fall semester. Case. Uh, oh, sorry. oh, the fall semester uh, due date uh, is the 14th of September. Sorry, okay. Casey. Casey, what's your Is this the summer program? So the SIP is summer. Did you? Did you studio is fall and spring. Mm -hmm. They run coinciding to the semesters. And you don't have to do both fall and spring. You absolutely can, but it's not required. So if you have a busy fall, but like you're underloading for spring, do it. I believe you can also um, get course credit if you ISP for uh, Digi Studio, but that might be a bit more paperwork. Um, yeah. So you're gonna have to talk with Monty about that. And Walt. And Tim. <laughs> and um, is that QR code for applying to both? For Digi Studio, yeah. SIP applications go out In generally March. towards the, I would say late winter, yeah. yeah. Um, they usually close like. like oh, they close know, in March. They, yep. Yeah, like early to late winter, they'll be out. Mm -hmm. If you want to apply early, then, uh, which means you want to get your portfolio and resume stuff early if you're planning to apply seven. Um, and it seems you recommend doing like either the fall or spring semester before doing yeah. the summer one, just to um, get some experience. Well, su summer is not uh, the same program. Summer innovation program is completely different. It says that you're building mm -hmm. from the ground up. 
Digistudio is you working on already published books. Mm -hmm. uh, Digistudio is not paid sales. Any other questions? So this is going to be 18 applications to sit in this row. Got it. All right, and 18 people who will need rec uh, like, recommendations. Uh, uh, for, uh, I know the due date is the 14th, but when do we? When would you start if you do get it? I think it is also the 14th. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a few days after. I think, I think funnily enough, I've heard conflicting information. Ah. So I recommend applying early. If not, it'll be in like the second wave. Yeah. Also, um, Digi Studio will probably ask for you to have recommendations. It's not a big deal. I don't even know if recommendations are checked. They are not. However, if you need a recommendations, talk to us. Uh, we're likely to just give it to you. Uh, but you know, tell us ahead of time so we can confirm with Mati that, that goes I for anything. Whenever, you, whenever you recommend, have anyone use his recommendation? Even if talk to them ahead of time. If it's a job, especially if it's a job. <laughs> yeah. No, but if it's a job application and you desperately need um, um a recommendation. I'm willing to give it like Tate is shilling. <laughs> I just I want people to get hired, okay? Yeah. Any more questions support. about SIP and Digi Studio? <laughs> we do have one more slide, I believe, um, which is just going over some more general opportunities. We've already gone over Digi Studio and SIP. Um the application QR code for SIP is just gonna take you to the website where they post the, the application later on. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about ideas, a little about the GDC narrative review competition. So ideas is the idea studio. I'm not, I don't know about the acronym. Um, ideas is a very unique type of contract work that runs on campus. Essentially, you get paid to work with clients on IMG adjacent projects. Um, there's stuff like um, physics labs. There's mm -hmm. like um, VR, like engineering spaces, stuff like that. They work on a whole bunch of projects. And this is your opportunity to get paid to do so while you're on campus. Um, the application information is coming soon. Um, they're still preparing for essentially the start of the year, uh, but it is essentially a student studio that just does contract work. Uh, we started originally by the previous IMG department head, uh, Jennifer DeWinter, um, mm -hmm. and it's still running now. Um, yeah. Additionally, this is the thing that I'm probably most qualified to talk about yeah. with ideas is the GDC Area Review Competition. Uh, for those of you who don't know, GDC is the games developer, or the game developer conference. Um, it's a really fun time. If you think PAX East is fun, uh, GDC is ten times as fun. Um, it's over in California, which means it's expensive. But if you do the GDC narrative review, you can get a free pass and really whittle down that cost. Um, the GDC narrative review competition information. I actually just received this from Professor Smith today. I'm going to forward it to the um, IGA Discord this afternoon. So feel free to take a look at it. Essentially, though, it is you are doing a narrative review of any game, and that's it. It's super simple. Um, you do a narrative review on a game according to the template they provide, and you are able to be essentially you have the opportunity to win a free pass and talk at GDC. Can WPI help with any expenses getting to GDC? That remains to be determined. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we're working with um, some student associations to see if we can help out with JC uh, travel costs. Mm -hmm. There are no promises. I would expect this to be a thing that happens down the line, too. Also, another reason why it's so important that each and every one of you signs up for the campus group. I don't more think, people, more funding. I don't think 10 people is going to make the difference. You go, oh, $1,000 plane ride. <laughs> a number is a number. A number is a number. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Um, that is actually it, folks. Uh, we are all set. You can stick around for questions, non existent pizza, or just there's a, a half a liter of Coke or a half a two liter of Coke out there. There's a liter of Coke. <laughs> I guess. Uh, we, we hope you all enjoyed the workshop and are going to come to tomorrow and the day after for the 2D art workshop and Unity Game Engine workshops tomorrow. So, well the 3D art and Unreal Game Engine workshops they have that. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, Chartwells can keep making some fantastic pizza yeah. for each of those days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then come by uh, to the game jams that are happening later this month. As well as the game jam at Copium, because you're all going to Copium now. You're mm -hmm. all applying to SIP. You're all doing everything. And you're all going to Mass DG events. Yes. That being said, we know this is a lot of information. Um, we just kind of barrage you with things that course. we personally learned over the course of three years here. So if you feel a little overwhelmed, that's fine. Um, this slide and recording will be made available on the Discord and YouTube channel, so you can refer back to it whenever you have questions. Um, 
If you feel overwhelmed, like you have a lot to do, good. That means it, it's worth doing stuff. <laughs> uh, if you feel like you got nothing out of that, sorry. But it makes me stop for you. Um, does anyone have any questions about anything? I enjoy it, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask if you could go back to the event right to our code for Mass Digi. So. Uh, this will be published on the Discord, so you just. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, first, with the IMG departments change out their technology. Uh, <laughs> I'll just turn and recommend new technology. Well, yeah, it's the opposite. Um, <laughs> I'm silly and never. That's the answer. Um, there's always incremental changes happening. Um, software is always being updated. We have a, this is not even touched on this topic, but there's actually an IMG lab manager, an assistant lab manager that have an office down in the sub basement. Um, they do a lot of work to make sure all our machines are still running all the time and upgrading hardware as needed. Um, they are students, so be nice to them. <laughs> uh, but as for how often we change the entirety of our technology, like suite and what software we use, not super. Um, you'll see sometimes there'll be like certain things that get swapped out. Uh, but that's usually a year long process. Uh, remember, if you feel overwhelmed, you're not going through uh, this alone. Uh, we have the IMGD uh, Discord for a reason. Um, just ask questions there. Someone is bound to want to help you. Um, and so ask questions someone to Someone is your... going to begrudgingly help you. <laughs> and ask, uh, be befriend like your classmates, like, you know, support each other. Uh, I make saw a bigger... question over there a little while ago. Someone drop it. I <laughs> Do not be intimidated by questions. This is a. I'm not intimidated by this. Well, now we're here. Um, anyone else have questions? Anything at all? You can always ask on Discord after this. Comments as well. I yeah. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I'd say something. Mm -hmm. No cyberbullying, well, but. I will say, I'm personally interested in the MQP you are doing. Uh, was it first breakfast? Yeah, breakfast. first and breakfast. Yes. Um, um, I mean, just like the general concept behind it. So we're, we're running a Fortran MQP where, because we have CSI new students, uh, it is a simulation game about birds running a bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, it is still in the inner workings of a term, so we are finishing up some pre-production stuff right now. Uh, we're targeting a Steam release for a demo of the game um, by the end of the And uh, when did you first conceive this idea? Was it... Around um, the time when uh, the MQP pitch was, we spent three weeks back to back, three weekends back to back, yeah. doing like week like brainstorming and talking with the team because mm -hmm. we had formed the team beforehand. Yeah, um, that's not the norm for all everyone. You can totally go into MQP pitch without a team. If you're going to pitch something, it's a lot easier to have a team and just want to get advisors on board than pitching something, trying to get advisors to sign on, and getting students to sign on. We are. Yeah. How big is your team? And is it like friends or peers? Uh, six people, and we're all friends. Or unless Nick has something. Well, unless Tate's gonna Tate's gonna up a master's next that like she like they just did. I no, unless you had something um, to that's, say. That's, you're that's, an asterisk. That's an asterisk. Wow. You're the asterisk. Wow. Uh, no, we're, we're all friends. We know each other for two years. Yeah. All together. Um, We've lived through the IMGD trauma. So there's no trauma in IMGD. <laughs> um. But yeah, what was the second <laughs> exactly. part of your question? Um, the first part was oh, how many people? How yeah, happened. six people is definitely a lot. Um, mm -hmm. there generally tends to be one or two six person on MQPs per year. Most MQPs tend to be around four people. Um, yeah. you can have something as small as two people with an yeah. ISP. You can even do a solo MQP. Um, but if you do a solo MQP, you won't be able to get an MQP award. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Huh. Like even for uh, Janelle's art book MQP, she did the art herself, but uh, she had uh, help from other people for the graphic design and printing stuff. Yeah, but um, yeah, and between teams come all shapes and sizes. But the larger you are, there's overhead to managing more people mm -hmm. and scheduling. Mm -hmm. uh, scheduling is a big. No, we have no thing. scheduling issues. <laughs> there are no scheduling issues in Boston. So. Yeah. Okay. We got 15 more minutes. People got questions. Is there a recording? The recording is wrong. I'm gonna post the recording. Uh, and I'll, I'll turn it off for unrecorded uh, questions shortly. I guess. All right. Talk to Rick. Um, I get faster, but um. Where are you saying for the new the other thing? Are you are you like learning the basics that are we using the Visual Studio or like visual scripting that you can't control 
So I would never recommend digital script based reading. Um, I don't think it's very good. Um, Unreal is a different case. We will absolutely, I think when Nelson runs that workshop, it will be visual scripting. Mm. Unity visual scripting is sort of like putting makeup on a bear. Um, I wouldn't recommend it and it's ugly to work with and it's probably gonna end poorly. Um, but, <laughs> you like that? Really? Okay, I, I, I'm definitely the opposite. Bear. No, no, no. Use, use it using Unity. Uh, you know, like uh, Scratch? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a uh, 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 Visual uh, scripting uh, is the act of attaching nodes to do code. Um, Unity didn't have one for the longest time, saw what Unreal was doing and said, well, they got peer pressure. We got to do it. Um, and I, don't, I don't think it's great yet. <laughs> No, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to use. All right, fair. Uh, no, I will say, I think for tomorrow's uh, work session, uh, workshop, they'll be run by Alex Smith. Um, I believe they will be doing um, all code. It's not about the code, it's about just the actual interface using your thing. Um, so it's better for any type of code? Yeah. Okay. Unlike Unreal, which I will actually advocate for visual scripting every day. Okay. Uh, also, some uh, internships uh, might just want you to type code yeah. as that's still the standard. Um, so I would recommend just uh, doing some uh, type coding just so you're familiar with it. Casey, is this a recorded question or should I go off the record? Okay. Uh, how? I'm CSI and GD, but I'm just like curious how often do you not? IMGD majors participate in IMGD uh, like MPs. Oh, it's actually kind of popular. Um, so I know several MPs this year that are running with like an IMG pitch with CS students. Um, again, there's stuff like Robot Escape Room, which is every year it's like IMG CS RP. Um, you can even get some weird cases where you have like an IMG student working on a different project for someone else that's like, here's a bio project that we have an interactive element, IMG student works on. Um, collaboration is always encouraged, but um, CS and IMG is definitely the, the biggest collaboration that happens there. Um, one MQP uh, that had uh, some CS students uh, also won the MQP award, uh, which is pre presented at Showfest uh, last year. So it's definitely a thing that can happen. Uh, unless anyone has no more questions, we're going to end the workshop, stop the recording.